Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you'll see behind me, we got the F20 M135i. Now we are gonna be talking about the BMW F20 M135i and M140i 2021. Now I'm doing this video purely because this is a very, very popular car, as many of you guys know, in the UK. And it's a car that is very, very favored here in the UK also. And what a lot of people target for their car. One, because of the low insurance. Two, because of the low road tax. And three, because it's very, very desirable because it's a hatchback car and it's the competitor for, as many of you guys know, the Golf R and the Audi S3 in the UK. So let's get onto this video. God damn, get it done, will you? When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. So many of you will be considering buying the BMW F20 M135i. Or if you're not considering buying the M135i, you'll be considering buying the M140i. Now, of course, for anyone purchasing a second hand car, everyone is gonna to want to know about the reliability standpoint. Now, if you've come from an E90 320i, which a lot of you would have done, or a lot of you are coming from an E87 120d, and you wanna put yourself in one of these, there's a lot of things you need to be aware of. Now, BMW did address the majority of the electrical issues that many of you would have faced on the E60s and the E90s, and a lot of it was rectified on this car because a lot of it was the CCC causing a lot of the issues, electrical gremlins inside these cars. But BMW rectified that by putting either CIC or MBT in these cars and it didn't have any issues apart from software which could be rectified by updating the modules. Now, if you are in the market to purchase one of these cars, I would strongly recommend the first things on these cars that you need to do. So obviously, this is an M performance car, as many of you guys will know already. Now, the suspension on these, if you get it with the adaptive suspension, it's basically like the electronic damper control, which is what the BMW M5 and the M3 use, which basically softens the blow on the shock absorbers when you're going over potholes and whatnot. In a sports setting, they're exactly the same with the springs or with the adaptive suspension system on these M135Is and M140Is. Now, to, everyone's got a different opinion on it. I prefer it on springs because I've got EDC on my M5 and I just don't like it. Um, I try and turn it off as much as possible and I drive it in a sports setting because the comfort just, I just don't know, for me, it just doesn't make any difference. That's why I didn't want another car with the adaptive suspension because I've already got one. Not only that, it is a big, big expense also. Now, Bearing in mind this is an M performance car, so it's got M sport handling. So it's set up to obviously go around corners quickly and obviously handle like a performance vehicle. That being said, everything has tight tolerances underneath. So the control arms on these do go out and it is very common that you'll notice your control arms going out probably around the 90 to 80K mark, which is very, very low for any BMW to eat their control arms, but it is known on these because the way they're set up, obviously they're low as well to the floor. So obviously going over potholes is gonna wear the bushings and obviously all the ball joints out quicker than a normal four x four car or your normal non M Sport BMW. Now underneath, you've got the M55 engine, which I'm gonna take you over to in a minute. The M55 engine, many of you will go and read up online and you'll read up all horror stories about rod bearings, injector failures, high pressure fuel pump, you name it, it's mentioned online. Now don't believe everything you read online because you only read the bad stories on forums. Nobody ever comes on there and says anything positive or anyone that's having no issues, don't ever look for any kind of forums to actually post about their problems because they don't have no issues. Now that being said, I know a lot of people with this car and the M55 is solid and reliable. The only time these go through rod bearings is usually when people remap them and they use the wrong weight oil. Another reason, just like on the S85 engine, S65, people boosting them while they're still cold before the oil is up to 
temperature to protect the engine and protect all the components. Another reason for rod bearing failure is people not doing the braking service. Now, if many of you guys ain't aware, these cars from factory come with launch control after 2013, if they've got the electronic wastegate. Now, this one didn't, but I have managed to code in launch control on it and updated the firmware on the whole car so I could have the launch control. Now, a lot BMW did deactivate that when the cars were released until people did the braking service, which I think was really good. So the rod bearing shouldn't be an issue as people couldn't launch it until they hit, I believe it was 1600 miles in the car. When you're looking to purchase one of these, I would be very, very careful. These haven't been involved in an accident or have been stolen. Now in the UK, this is probably the most stolen car to date. The M135i and the M140i, very, very stolen car. How do I know that? Well, many people I know have had their stolen of these and not too long ago, a neighbor up the road from me actually had his one stolen. Um, they are a common car to get stolen, especially here in the UK because they're quick. And also a lot of people nick them because of the MBT system. Um, a lot of the things inside these cars are very, very expensive, i.e. the CAFAS, the MBT, the CIC, it's all sellable. Everything on the car sellable, the extended cluster, Therefore, they go for good money. People Virginianize them and sell them for other people, for your cars. So do be aware of that. Usually it is fully loaded models. A lot of these people will check your VIN, see what you've got on the car, and then that's when they usually nick it. The majority of people usually nick it when it's got comfort access. So if you are in the market to buy one of these, also I do recommend not to buy one with comfort access. Now, if you do get one with a power fold mirrors, you'll probably notice as well, if you have bought it from someone who's looked after it, the power fold mirrors won't go up by the key. Now that is because BMW don't want you closing the mirrors on the key in case it's cold weather because it will crack the motors inside. You can code that in, but the reason BMW don't do that is for that reason, to stop the gears actually breaking, but you can close them on the button inside the car. Now another common fault on these, if you plan to buy one, is be aware when you actually go to purchase one of these that you check the gearbox. The DF8 gearbox is known to have a whine in reverse, and believe me, it's very, very loud. Or it will be banging gears between first to second, which is another common problem as well, even when the gearbox is warmed up. Now, a software update might cure some of the issues and reset any adaptions, but you might end up needing a new gearbox. Now, the ZF8 gearboxes are not expensive these days. You can buy them for around 500 pounds, and there is a lot of cars that they were fitted to. So therefore, they're very, very readily available. The next thing on these, which many of you guys will know about as well, is the exhaust valve on the back of these cars. Now, many people deactivate them, take the exhaust actuator off and weld the exhaust valve open. Therefore, not needing to have the device connected and not needing to have um, the pin keep flapping about causing a rattle on the exhaust. These cars also sound much better with the exhaust valve removed. Now the exhaust valve is only for emissions. When your car is cold, it's to help the car keep the heat in the engine to get the engine up to temperature a lot faster. And then once the engine's up to temperature, the valve actually opens. So it's actually useless and you're not gonna lose no miles per gallon difference by doing that. Now the next one I wanna get onto is miles per gallon because a lot of people are under this belief that this car does 40 to 45 miles per gallon. I can tell you right now, it does not. So if you are looking to buy one of these cars, I assure you right now, this car is not gonna be the best car for miles per gallon. If you're in the market for that, avoid it at all costs. A whole tank on this, and this has got no modifications, no room up, no nothing, probably done me 280 miles from a full tank. So you guys can work that out and then you'll be able to see how many miles this car actually done. This car is not the most economic car on the road. So I know a lot of people wanna state that and so do BMW's figures. Believe me, you're not getting nowhere near them figures with an eight-speed gearbox. Just t take my word on that, trust me on that. The only way you're gonna probably get even just slightly better miles per gallon is in a manual. And to be honest, that's another thing. A lot of people do buy these in manual and you're basically just wasting your time away buying this in a manual. These are best bought with the ZF8 gearbox. That eight-speed gearbox is lightning fast. The sport transmission really, really does make this car 
I don't see the point in buying a manual version of these cars. If you look at me, all my cars are actually automatic, even to the point of my M5. Yes, it's got a manual gearbox and actually a manual car, just with electronics that make it actually automatic. But every car I drive is automatic and the way automatic gearboxes are going these days, you no longer need a manual. This is a lot faster gear changes. And if you ever wanted to compete or go on a track, this gearbox, you know, it hammers manuals for dinner. Like I said, the manual gearbox isn't worth it and you're not gonna get better miles per gallon by buying a manual. Also, a resale point, if you ever wanted to sell it, majority of people go for these in automatic. Now, if you go on the forums, everyone will tell you the same thing. When they spec these brand new or bought them brand new, a lot of people said they drove them both and like they said, they don't see the point in a manual anymore. Anyone who bought a manual, you'll probably see they're still up for sale to this day because it's very, very hard to get rid of them because these are best opted for with that automatic transmission. Servicing isn't expensive on these. You can buy the whole kit for 200 pound and probably do it yourself if you're confident, but you just have to be aware of these small issues on this car. Now, electronically, these cars are very superior. They don't have a lot of electronic problems on them. So you're therefore not gonna experience any kind of faults. Any faults you do experience will probably be from the engine or the gearbox. It will not be from the electronics as the electronics rarely fail on this car. Now, underneath you've got the N55 M Performance engine, which I'm about to show you right now. So as you'll see here, this is the BMW N55 M Performance engine. Now, a lot of people will talk a lot of crap about this engine. Let me just tell you before we even go any further with this video. Now, the M55 engine was plagued in issues on the E90. That's because BMW first designed it. But as the years went on, BMW noticed the issues it was having and rectified it. Now, these use the Piso style injectors. So not the same injectors from the M54. These have also got a much better high pressure fuel pump, which now is strong and reliable and does not fail. They also now use a different wastegate on the turbo. So now the turbo wastegate is non-existent. Also rod bearing failure. These use a forge crankshaft and also the bearings in them are actually the same bearings that you'll find in the M4 and M3 S55 engine. Now the S55 was derived from the M55 engine and it's got a lot of the same internals, this engine as the F55 which a lot of people are none even the wiser. If this engine was so intense for blowing up, you would have a lot of cases on the M4 and M3 and people wouldn't be modifying them so far. But the fact is the S55 does have its issues, which are different to the M55, i.e. the crank hub, but all the internals are usually sound and the internals ain't the ones that usually fail. It's the crank hub that causes all them components to fail in the engine. So therefore, if you are looking to purchase one of these cars, go and buy it. The only things you have to worry about is at 100K, you'll have to do the valve cover gasket. The next one you'll have to do will be the oil cooler and the oil filter housing gasket, which is not a big job. You may get away lightly without having to do the water pump and thermostat, but at some point you will have to do that. A lot of the jobs on these are very, very low money. And it's not to say you're gonna end up with all them issues. The main issue you'll probably come up with are the gaskets, which will be the oil cooler or foot housing gasket and the valve cover, which are not hard jobs. And you could probably accomplish all of it for less than a hundred pound. The gasket from BMW are around 40 pound and the valve cover gasket is around 50 pound. So therefore you'll be able to replace it all for very, very cheap money. These are not expensive engines to maintain and anyone who tells you that is lying to you. These engines are very, very solid and reliable. I cannot say the same for people in the USA because a lot of people in the US treat their cars differently to the way we do. They also have a different climate, so they run different oils based on their climate in their country. For instance, if you live in a hot climate, you're gonna to wanna to run thicker oil, so that way it can protect the engine as quick as possible at higher temperatures because the temperatures from outside providing heat into the engine bay is gonna cause higher temperatures in the engine bay and also for the engine. Now, if we live in the UK, usually 5W30 is usually fine here, but obviously because we get cold here, it's usually better to actually run 0W30 or 0W40 as well. It's all based on you, but I do prefer to run 5W30 on this engine. 
As this engine's turbocharged, you want the oil to lubricate everything around the engine as quick as possible. Not only that, you want your turbo life to be extended. So 5W30 is the best oil because it isn't too thick, isn't too thin, and it will protect it at high temperatures. And usually the UK doesn't go past much past 30 anyway. We've never seen temperatures here hit really 40 unless we're talking many, many years ago. But so 30 is adequate for this car. Now let's move on to interior. As you can see here, the interior is really, really nice and it is a really nice place to be. Now, every single one of these F20s can be upgraded. So please don't go based on spec. For instance, a lot of people try and go for the Pro Nav up there and the extended instrument cluster and they want the new style steering wheel. Do not go based on that spec because a lot of this stuff is very, very cheap to buy on eBay and you can retrofit it with ease on the F-Series. Now, if you didn't know, the screen up there, if you buy one with a small screen, you just have to buy the widescreen and have it coded for a widescreen, and it will run the same as the small screen one. The extended cluster, again, you can buy them Virginianized, and you can just fit it and then code it in. The steering wheels, if you buy the exact same steering wheel and you've got all the buttons, i.e. cruise control, which this one doesn't have, which we're gonna be retrofitting on this, you can just buy the same exact steering wheel, the same buttons and pull it back straight on with no coding needed. A lot of people ain't aware of that. They seem to think they need to code the new steering wheel. That's just simply not the case. Now, you'll probably notice down there also, we don't have parking sensors. Now, a lot of these one series didn't come with parking sensors. This is something I'm looking to do. I'm gonna be doing the park assist where it parks the car itself. Many of you guys don't know what that is. We're also gonna be putting lane keep assist on this and also front collision assist on this car. We're gonna be retrofitting that as this one has the CAFAS camera. If you don't know what that is, that's the driver assistance camera, which a lot of the F10s have also. These cars, like I say, very, very nice place to be in. Everything usually works. Only one major issue with the interior, if you would have seen on my video, would be the blower motor. The blower motors and these can get loud. They can get leafs down into scuttle onto them and you can just take it out, you would have seen on my video, and clean it all out fully and rectify it or buy a new one, which I bought for literally 20 pound. Now there is a lot of other retrofits you can do on this, i.e. high beam assist, uh, auto lights, which this one didn't have, which it now has, but auto lights and wipers, this one didn't have that. So there is many retrofits you can do on this car. Now from standard, this car didn't come with auto lights, but it had the memory seats and everything else. Didn't have the powerful mirrors, but as something else I'm gonna be retrofitting on this car is gonna be powerful mirrors also. Now, if you'll see at the back of the car here, the lines on the boot towards the tail lights and everything is really, really nice. The F20 really, really does stand out. And this M135i really, really sets the mark for what BMW did with one series. Now, if many of you guys ain't aware, they don't do this in a saloon. That's purely because they wanted to force people over to the two series if you wanted a saloon car. They didn't want to put the F20 in a saloon's shape. So they made the two series for people to go and buy that model. And if many of you guys didn't know, they didn't actually release the two series until later on because they wanted to sell the F20 and make people buy the F20 only. So they didn't even have the two series out. Another thing a lot of you will probably not be aware of is this car didn't go over to the USA. It didn't touch US soil. Now, nobody understands why that was. From what I was reading up, the reason it didn't touch US soil is because Europe didn't want it going there because they said that the Americans are incapable of handling a powerful rear wheel drive car. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but you can see it all over the internet. If you pull it in, why the F20 didn't get into the USA and they didn't want it touching American soil. Is that a good thing? Of course it is. I'm really, really happy it didn't go there because it's what makes obviously my channel and also this car unique to us in the UK and obviously the EU. If this was in the US, we wouldn't have nothing spectacular to have in the UK, which they don't have, which they can't get, which this is what sets it apart for us. Also, we can get them very, very cheap, which the nearest price for them to get into this engine and also to get a car like this, they need to pay up anywhere between $20,000 for an M235i. You'll probably find your cheapest one for $15,000, probably all damaged, but they have to pay a lot more money to get in to one of these, where we can get these for under 10K. I've even seen them for even 8,000 pounds, which is around $12,000. Very, very cheap money to get into one of these. And that has no issues. It's just the price of them. These were only 33 grand, 35 grand brand new. These M135Is, 
F20s, and you've got to think, this is only nine years old, and it's already come down to a, already to around 10K, 12K, you can buy them for now all day. So it really, really is a good car, and if you're planning to get one, I do recommend to go and buy one. The sound of these cars are literally incredible, and when many of you are gonna compare the M140i to the M55, the one thing the M55 has over the B58 is the sound. The M55 produces one of the best sounds over the M140i, which the M140i cannot even compete. Now, many of you are gonna say, just change the exhaust, get a Miltech exhaust system. You still won't get the same sound as the M55 does. The M55 produces a sound like no other, and that's what makes the M135i completely different to the M140i. So do pick carefully when choosing the car. Also, there's a lot of power differences as well with the B58 and also the M55. Me personally, I do prefer the M55 and I nearly actually bought an M140i. But as I said on many videos, the B58 just didn't appeal to me. And not only that, I just didn't want to be helping a load of Toyota guys. Not only that, it's still a new engine and a lot of people just don't have it. Where with this, a lot of people have this in the E90, a lot of people have this in the E87. So the engine is very, very popular. Therefore, um, it applies to a much wider audience. Okay guys, so there you have it. I've now gone over the BMW F20 M135i M140i reliability. As I said, there isn't really much that actually fails on these cars. Now, you've got to bear in mind these are still quite new. I mean, this is only nine years old, not even 10 years old. Now, if the mileage was lower in this country, you would have got a warranty on it. Another thing is, these started from 2011 and ran all the way to 2019. So you've got to think as well, they're still using the M55 in 2019, and a lot of them are only literally three years old, which is still just coming out of BMW warranty, going on to third party warranty that many people are gonna be buying them from dealers and getting warranty. So there isn't really much that fails in them. Now, a lot of people are still buying these because how reliable they are, and you're not hearing any bad things about this car at all. And that's purely because they are as reliable as people say they are. As I said to you, just don't believe everything you read on the forums about the other E90 having issues and let that scare you. In the UK, it's completely different. These cars are completely different. We treat them completely differently to the way they are treated in the US also. And the same is for the climate. We don't have the kind of climate that they have over in the USA and other countries. So these cars here are ultra, ultra reliable. So do not be led by what you read on forums because the majority of people on there is all from the US with their issues. Leave them to it and leave them with their issues. We don't suffer with that over here. So therefore it's nothing to do with us. So thank you very much for watching guys. And I hope if you're in the market to go and buy yourself an F20 M135i M140i, this video will be sure to help you. As I said, do not go based on the spec of the car because a lot of F20s do have low spec. It is a one series after all, and there wasn't many options you could actually fit. A lot of people, when specking these, got given a lot of them for free or thrown in with half the price, or you know what, how the BMW do it. Depending on the dealer you go to, they can say they'll give you this, give you that. But in the same time, you can find a lot of X demo cars, which will be fully loaded. And if it's right for the money, then go ahead and buy it. But do not pay over the price based on spec because everything can be retrofit for half the price. Not only that, you will lose long term. In the UK, we go by mileage and condition, not what's inside the car. So therefore, if the more mileage you do, the less value it's gonna be. It's not gonna be worth more just because it's got a fully loaded spec. That's not what people pay for these days. So thank you very much for watching guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.